Bienvenue à « Comment gagner de l'argent et comment créer une entreprise et augmenter vos revenus » avec Glendon Cameron. What's going on, people? It is Friday, April the 25th. Yes, I have the date correct. Someone in the uh, mastermind group put in a very interesting Google talk about the future of work. And uh, his name is Chris, and I, I want to say thanks, Chris, because... I listened to it while I was in the gym, the whole thing. And this was a recent talk this year. And so many of the things that I've talked about for the last five years, and even some things I've never talked about on the personal side with the uh, Montessori school is, it was just amazing to see that kind of validation actually at the headquarters of the company that owns this channel. Or all of, all of uh, YouTube. And it was just really, really interesting. And um, one of the themes that something that I've noted, and it goes back and forth, and you, you hear the stats about, well, unemployment's not that bad. Oh, it is. That. It's all over the place. But this theme is, I don't think I fully articulated what it means, but it's declining shared prosperity our you know, Reaganomics, trickle-down economics and that stuff, at one point it worked. I mean, as certain segments of the economy improved, all segments of the economy improved. We have very much a compartmentalized economy, meaning that winner-take-all, meaning that there are a select few who are getting most of the pie. It used to be whatever you did, you had to share, you know, shared prosperity. Now, you could get the whole pie. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. If you're the guy making the pie, it's great. It's awesome. It's over the top wonderful. If you are in line for a piece of pie, it's uh, cataclysmic. And I was listening to this talk and they were going on and on and on. And it, it, it just really, really reinforced some concepts that I haven't, like I said, that I haven't really explored on YouTube or even talk to you guys about but this shit is going to get realer than real because we're about to reach an apex and at that's that point where things are just going to go hockey stick growth because something that I noted a few years ago manufacturing is coming back to America and the reason is that these companies or uh, countries that used to be really cheap it's no, they're no longer cheap. Manufacturing has been reduced in China. I knew that. There was an article about it. I don't know, it wasn't The Economist, but I saw the article about two, three years ago because uh, it was actually in the magazine store. And they were just showing, there was pictures of all these shuttered factories and how literally villages and cities were decimated because the manufacturing left. And these people who were once in the rice paddies they didn't want to go back to the rice paddies. I mean, hey, you get out the rice paddy. I, I wouldn't want to go back either. So this thing is not just hitting us here in the United States. It is hitting the world. And I'm really curious to know what's going to happen with people who just came out of a certain economic cycle for, you know, for lack of any, for a better term, going into middle class living to be knocked off that pedestal so quick because for many of these people this was a relatively new phenomenon in the last two decades now another part and this just I, I mean I just started laughing and it, it wasn't a good time to laugh because I was in the middle of a set of squats but when this guy in the audience he asked this question you know it was a personal question if you have children what would you tell them in light of what you know is coming of the future. And the responses were very interesting because for those of you, I've talked about this with nurses, they feel due to, and I, I see this coming, I actually think I talked about this two years ago, that doctors will be displaced to a degree. And I'm like, no, no, it's not gonna happen. I, I'm gonna actually really, really explain that to you. When I was in the medical field, the floor used to operate like this. It was like one wing, two, it's four wings, right? Each wing had four or five nurses or six nurses and a tech. Understand that. 
six or seven nurses and a tech. Now what has happened is that floor will have six or seven techs, nurse techs or certified nurse assistants or whatever they are called, and one nurse. Now what's gonna happen is that nurse is gonna disappear and there's gonna be a computer that's gonna tell those techs what to do until we get to the point where we can have robots, people like to make fun of the way I say robots, do certain things. What that's gonna do is, and then, then like doctors, like doctors are not ever going, they're never gonna disappear, but they're gonna become centralized. You're gonna have a doctor in the control station or maybe at home with his feet or her feet up, and they're gonna be on their iPad doing diagnostics and stuff to the folks who are in the hospital. They will not have to be there. It'll be remote medicine. I mean, this is, this is in our lifetime. You know, you won't have to go to the doctor. Doctor will come to you on your computer screen, your phone to reach your blood pressure and stuff. This is going to reduce the need for the number of doctors because of automation. One doctor will be able to do the work of probably 10 in the future because of the efficiencies that come with scale. So everything, and that, and that the, it was just like, fields that you don't think would be displaced are going to be displaced. And what was really interesting, and this is where I, like the giggle came from. I mean, I was squatting, I, I had four, shit, 425, and that's not a place to giggle when you got 425 on your back. But they said that the, so thus far, because anything can change, thus far, the fields that will not be disruptive are ones that require high levels of creativity and entrepreneurship. And I was just sitting there like, by Jove, they're telling the truth. Now I, I was just like, oh God. Because I have wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was 11 years old. And when you have family dynamics and you have all this other crap that goes on, many people's just like, oh, you're not smart enough. Oh, you're not good enough. Oh, you don't do it. I didn't do it. You know, I have a job that's good enough for me. It should be good enough for you. And I rigorously refused to accept those notions. And I finally got myself into a position where I was an entrepreneur, self-employed, hustling, and I haven't been happier in my life. And I thought about that. So this, this is something I talked about. And I actually said, hey, you know, you may be safe now, but that's not going to last. They even talked about what Quick Intuit did with bookkeeping. I was just sitting there like, oh, that. And this was this year. And I was like, damn, this is some good shit. Then I thought about it. It's a scary, scary future. Uh, since these are academic guys, they couldn't really go too far out on a limb because their reputations are very important to their work. But I can, well, I'm not an academic and I don't have a reputation I have to worry about. And I will say that this thing's going to kick off really, really hard in about five to seven years. It's already happening. And it's already happening and it's impacting many, many people. But it's going to, it's going to accelerate. It's going to increase. It's going to just be really, really over the top decimating to many professions because I am looking at the number of people because recently like last week people some people I knew were laid off and it's like hey what about Hustle University what about this you know what you, if I were if, you know if uh, you were me what were you doing I was like do or do that I was you <laughs> there's no if I went through that you're gonna have to make some very hard decisions I'm gonna have to change your lifestyle and you know, we went on with that. But essentially, I am looking at what really is holding people back from this. Because as I put out in the QA the other day, it, there is no there's no uh safety nets anywhere. There's no such thing as a sure job. Doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist. Because there was a article there was a woman she was a doctor and she got sick and she had to go on food stamps now, i want you to think about how humbling that was for this person who went through all of this training to become a doctor and because of her illness she couldn't work and she had to go on public assistance she never saw that coming she never saw that coming and essentially i'm i'll talk about my transformation of a, or being a reseller 
and having to do a great deal of physical work to moving to strictly to the creative side. And it just made sense to me because I said today and I said it before, I still don't make as much money as I did when I was a store shushing business. And for a lot of people, they're just like, I don't understand that. That doesn't compute to me. That does not make sense, Glendon. It is all about the money. Let me explain it to you and break it down so you can really digest this. I'm going to break it down in little bite-sized pieces or even mix it up for you so you can spoon feed it to you. I have learned that I have great intuition. I have learned that things that come to me that I used to be scared to talk about or voice when I was a kid, that if I had the courage to say these things, when they became true and the validation points entered my life, I would have been looking like, you know, Notre Dame or Notre Dame. I instinctly knew July 17th, 2009, that that was going to be my last shot at being a writer. Don't know what, just something said now or never. If you don't do this now, it's not going to happen. I traded money and a certain level of influence and stuff for the future. I made a value proposition loaded decision that I was going to be better off in the future as a creative person than a person who did a lot of manual labor. If you're in the storage auction business, if you're doing Amazon FBA, if you're a reseller and you're doing eBay, you are doing a great deal of manual labor. You are trading your time and your body for dollars. This is just the facts of it. And I moved away from that because I know the power of being a creative person. When I do, uh, I study so many things I don't talk about. I made the distinction that the producers, when you go and look at Celebrity Net Worth and you look at Spielberg, you look at George Lucas, you look at uh, Kevin Costner, the guy behind the camera always made more money. Mel Gibson made most of his money from producing and owning and controlling the distributorship of one movie, Passion of Christ. He's, I think he spent $25 million of his own money and the movie made $300 million. So he, he created a fantastic amount of wealth in mere months. Mere months because of the creative aspect. And, you know, like I said, I write a lot of different things. I do the business stuff that you hear about because that's what, you know, puts the cheese on the Whopper. But going forward, there's other things that I will write. There are other things that will put out because I've been able to create a writer's lifestyle that I can sit down and look at the sky and like, oh, that's a nice line. I can do that. And that was the trade-off. I couldn't be that storage auction guy going to storage auctions all over Atlanta, you know, working Monday through Friday, working weekends, hosting. I couldn't do that. Or as many people like to say, you can't serve two masters. And that's pretty much where I would have been with the trying to do storage auctions because some people are like, hey, you could do storage auctions, you could do videos. I made a choice. And it's looking to be a very <laughs> prescient choice because I can do this stuff forever. Uh, the other day, I was actually out of town this weekend. And on the way back, I decided to write a book. Uh, the book that's dropping today. Killer, how to make killer money with YouTube, pimping YouTube for fun and success. It just came to me while I was driving. I said, eh. I kind of, you know, pulled out my phone, sketched out some chapters, emailed them to myself, got home, started working, knocked out 1,400 words, and uh, finished that book yesterday. Now, what's really interesting, and, you know, for everybody that's like, hey, I don't want to start anything, I want my success. Now, this book is better written. It was written much faster. It has more words than my first book, which took me three and a half months to write with my ass in the chair six to eight hours a day, five to seven days a week with mostly seven days a week because there was a lot of sitting at the computer screen like, oh, uh, what's next? It was a lot of that, you know, and I, I had to completely change my process. But 
I could not do what I did this week if I didn't do what I did in 2009. What I'm telling you is, if you're gonna start a business, you need to start with what you can. If that business only makes you 50 bucks, fine. If it only makes you, if it makes you nothing and you got a job, fine. You you gotta get that experience. You gotta get that experience and you've got to get there now because I left the storage auction world on YouTube shit two years ago. And many people say, hey, storage auction resale. I left and started moving in a different direction because once again, I checked a website that was a major storage auction website and their traffic has just went boom interest level there's there'll always be traffic there but put it this way my youtube channel gets more hits than their website i got the metrics because i was sitting there like ha, 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 and someone told me this wasn't going to work out for me ha huh? but you you have that was a lesson for you you you're not going to be able in the future to really get comfortable with something that's really successful for you. It will be removed from you because new stuff's always coming into the marketplace. I realize for me to continue to have this writer's lifestyle, this online internet, I can be anywhere working lifestyle that I have to continue to produce. And that's why I shuttered some projects. I moved them around. I will finish them up. But I wanted to see what I can do, take an ideal, put it out there. I, like I said, I started Sunday. I had my cover, which I did myself, done Sunday. Then I had one professionally made. The guy actually did it the two days faster than I thought he would. Had that done and got the work, got the editing done. Because in the course, 30 days, 2,500, I'm like, get started, get going, get doing. And... I think by me explaining this to you and saying, hey, you know, it's very possible because I didn't know how to do this stuff in 2009. I didn't know how to do it. It was just a learned skill, which goes back to education. And we're going to talk about education because this is going to have a little rant. Studies show that people with more education make significantly more money. Now, one of the reasons I like these guys on this talk is they didn't just say education. They broke it down. He said life experiences, self-taught, which is what I have been pushing for so long because for many of you fuckheads out there, when you say education, you have it in the box of having a degree. Now, this is going to be extremely insulting and you should take it as an insult. If you could see that your mother, your brother, and many people you know with degrees are living close to abject poverty, can't do the things they want in life, but they speak really well, and you're going to follow that path, you're a fucking idiot. That means that you do not have something that's very critical in any level of education, critical thinking skills. If you cannot use elementary school math to deduce that that is not a good way to go, your education will not serve you well because the possessor of that education is an idiot. And this is one of the reasons that I get to giggle and poke at people and everything because I expanded the, the, the definition of education for myself in 1999. If you, and I'm going to tell you something, this, and you know, this is just from me to you. When I step into a room of uh, certain people I am finding myself to be the most educated person in there because of one simple element of my life. I never stopped learning. I just told you, I, I didn't know how to do this stuff in 2009. It's 2014. I never stopped learning. Many people in my age, and I'm 47, they're done. I don't read books. Don't try anything new. They're done. And then when the big penis in the sky comes for them, they're going to be like, oh, what? Wait a minute, Wilbur. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. Leave that alone. You cannot be in a position of stasis and expect to be safe. And when I really, really thought about it, because I was talking to one of my uh, clients and uh, she was just like, you know, I just really want to thank you because even before I signed up for your consultant services, 
you taught me so much on YouTube. You made me feel that I could actually do these things. Because she said simply, I didn't feel that I, I could do it and I didn't feel that I was worth the effort. Many people feel that way. And it is really, really interesting how uh, there was a uh, one of the groups and there was someone that was uh, debating on going back to school. And it was like $100,000 uh, tuition for grad school. And I was just sitting like, okay, do you, you, it's like, you know, the, here we go again. The notion of going to school and getting a degree is so ingrained that even when it doesn't make sense, even when there is empirical evidence that is a waste of time and money, people still behave in lemming-like ways and jump over the cliff and don't even hold their nose. There's none of this. They're just like, I'm in the water, Willie. Poosh. Oh, shit, it's wet. And I'll say it. I mean, I think if you, as, you know, if you're a young person and you don't know what the hell you want to do, do not go to school to try to figure it out. You are wasting too much time and money playing around. Don't go to school. Uh, I met a lady the other day, a young lady, uh, was getting lunch and we were talking about that. And she said, uh, my parents had some money saved and when I ran out and I didn't know what to do, I just stopped going because I'm not getting a student loan debt. She said, too many of my friends, they, they have more, she said, mortgage size student loan debt and they don't have jobs. This is what she said. This was the other day. And people will fight me and they'll go on and on and on about this. And I will tell you something. If you pick something, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it is slapping the asses of rabbits and you become really good and you create, hey, yo, this is Johnny John John's ass, rabbit ass slapping tutorials. People will pay for that shit because you're an expert. It's like, well, that John John, he uh, knows how to really slap the asses of rabbits. I mean, I've never seen anyone do it like he does it. Okay, uh, being you know being facetious, but seriously, if you take um, anything, I'm gonna give you because uh, there there are people who are doing it and they're doing it wrong. That there are people who are taking their eBay knowledge or their Craigslist knowledge and they're and they're monetizing it, but part of the problem is the knowledge base isn't deep enough for the next episode you one book this you know I've, I've been in publishing for five years unless that one book is a bestseller and the odds are astronomically high galactical that's my word they're galactically high that it's going to be a bestseller you need to have some more books you need to have books books b-o-k-s that B O O K, and people aren't getting that because when I started, conditions were different. I will tell you, I lived for two years off the income from one book, but I beat the television shows. I had the YouTube channel. I was the only one talking about it for a long time, so I was able to enter a space as the lead dog. That's a hard, hard, I mean, I, well, I'll just say I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was, it was awesome. It was freaking awesome. I mean, it was amazing. And I, I'm grateful and thankful for the experience. But for those of you that want to <clears throat> get into the world of business, you have to start and get over your fear. You you have to do that because this thing that's is, is upon us. I mean, that breath you feel on your neck, that's the uh, big penis in the sky. And it's just like, I'm not, I can't get you yet, but I'm coming. Because we, we have a few fundamental problems. One, and um, you know, this is the conspiracy theorist, theorist in me, that a lot of this is planned because we have a nation of people who are incapable of critical thought. You talk to any business owner, you can go find a guy that owns an engineering firm and just take him to lunch and say, look, what's the biggest problem you have with recruits? And he's like, they can't solve problems. They can't think. Now, if you're an engineer, that's what you do. You uh, fix shit, you build shit, you create shit, and you solve problems. That is the core of what you do. And there are people going to school with and getting engineering degrees and they can't do this. Because the focus is on looking pretty. Hey, I have a high GPA. And I went to so-and-so school. 
and I want you know eighty thousand dollars a year, and can't do the job. <laughs> can't do the job. I have friends. I have a friend that owned it. I mean, this was a big problem. And he was saying he was pissed off they didn't have any more HPB or whatever visas because he was getting better recruits from India. His words, not mine. But you really are going to have to let the way things were go and deal with things the way that they are and will become. For a long time, getting a degree was the surest path to middle class prosperity. It was there. It was for real. But it's not like that anymore. If you did not hear me, some doctors will be displaced in the future. Doctors. And, I'm, I, and it makes sense. A lot of people are like, oh, no. I, if you ever worked in healthcare, doctors work on systems and protocols. It is not going to be that hard to put that protocol into some type of program. It's like, hey, he comes in, the patient presents this, then we're going to do X, Y, and Z. That's the protocol. That's going to be real easy to implement on these computer deals. I'm just sitting, I'm telling you, because the days of when I was a kid, you go see the doctor, you sit there, he talked to you, tickle your ear, and he really looked at you because he had the time. That's not here anymore, man. It's care. It's changed all that. But if you think that you are safe, and uh, some of you are, some of you are safe, you know, to some of you, I am talking nothing but much junk. But if there's many of you, you're not. And if you are running head on into an occupation or business that requires a great deal of physical labor, you are going to be in trouble. You're going to be in a lot of trouble because you're not going to be able to beat these larger companies that are going to fully automate. Just not. I mean, a lot of people are talking about Amazon and what the workers make and blah, 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 and Walmart, and they should pay a living... I don't believe in that stuff. Uh, I, I believe, and I, I'm speaking to someone who was poor. I am speaking to someone who was homeless once. I don't believe in that stuff because I've had some things revealed to me this week that when people are helped too much, they lose their motivation to thrive and to climb. They become comfortable. And there were just two things that was revealed to me this week from, uh, you know, just family stuff of people that had amazing amounts of help. Um, I mean, over the top amounts of help and they're, they're both failures. And they had all the help, support and all this other stuff. And that is common because I will say that, you know, it was ugly, but I'm thankful for the experience of going through all of that stuff, being homeless, living in the boarding house, uh, the day labor thing, because when I thought I was going through misery, I was accumulating so much data over so many different fields. And with so, I mean, it just, my knowledge base just went, <laughs> wasn't getting really paid for it then, but I'm getting paid for it now. And that's one of the things, that's the theme. I, I'm gonna repeat myself. You need to get started. You need to start accumulating these knowledge points because when I'm through the Q and A's and people hit me with questions, it someone even it's like you know you just answer every question just off like bam off the top of your head it's because of having all of those experiences and if i don't know something i was like hey i don't know i don't deal with that uh, someone asked me about apps i've never made an app uh i know people who have it's not something that interests me because i'm not an app person i mean my phone desktop is probably one of the cleanest ones you'll ever see because i just don't do a lot of apps uh, I do, but my life is extremely uncomplicated. And I don't have to have apps to manage me because someone asked me, uh, what do you use to organize your day? I, 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 my day is very simple. <clears throat> Get up, <laughs> go to the gym, go for a walk, write, uh, work on the webinar. My day is very, very simple. And this was because I designed it that way. But for you, to go from where you are to where you want to be, you have to get started and stay started. Because this thing is, it concerns me because you can't be in a vacuum like, hey, I'm okay. And and that's what most people do. If, if it's not in their sphere of influence or it impacts them, they don't give a shit. But this thing will impact everyone because, you know, it's curious to see. And like I said, 
I'm a creative person and I know that I'll be okay and mine will be okay because I know how to make money from different sources without a job. I know how to make money. I mean, it's just, and I'll just tell you, uh, the book that I was talking about, I did a pre-sale, which is the first time I ever did that. That's something, I'm, I'm always experimenting with stuff, but the pre-sales, and I did the book at a discount, did it at a discount. Once again, laboratory stuff, I'm like, you know what? Get your own information, do it yourself, find out if it works for you. And uh, that book has already made more money and it will release, or I don't know, depending on when you get this video, it may be released. That book's already made more money in a matter of days than my first book made the first month it was out. With me doing all it, because you know, the technique, you know, I'm learning, I'm, I read, I go, to, I'm listening to webinars, I, I read a lot of books. I, the education of the G verse never stops. It extends to my personal life. I'll, I'll get real personal. I was reading this blog of these power lifters. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something. This is this is where getting your own education, paying for your own education, is pivotal. I got on a program, and it goes totally against what everything that you've heard about working out. You work heart muscle group one day, you do this, and you give it the 24 hours to rest. I did heavy squats, heavy deadlifts, power no, not power cleans. Uh, overhead presses and benches five freaking days in a row. Yes, I did not stutter. Heavy, not heavy like heavy. I'm talking 400 pounds, 500 pounds. That kind of heavy, five days in a row. Took two days off, went back to the gym, and I was stronger because of periodization. And I, I'll even give it to you. Like I said, this video is all over the place. You go on Monday, right? You do... Um, you, you go max out. You, you knock what you can. Tuesday, you crank it down, not to half, but 70%, which feels light <laughs> because 30% is off. It feels pretty light. Then Wednesday, bam, you crank it back up. Thursday, you do singles. I, heavy, every day. I mean, I'm in the gym, people looking at me like I'm nuts. I walk up to the squat bar, I put 400 on, and I go to work. And they're like, what the f This is what I learned by never to stop learning. I'm 47 and I haven't been this strong since I was 22. And if I knew this stuff that I know now at 22, I would probably be seriously squatting like 800 pounds, maybe a thousand. Seriously, if I knew this stuff because uh, I'm naturally strong. I already know that part because but just the information, the knowledge, the education and also, I applied the lessons of the weightlifting to my business courses. You know, give you some hard, give you some light, you, but keep going and you'll get stronger and you get better. And this, these are the lessons that come from never, ever stop educating yourself. And many people think education can only be confined in the hollowed halls of a university. And uh, simply put, some of the stupidest fucking people I've ever met in my life have not one, not two, but several degrees. And when I say stupid, cannot figure out simple shit. Can't figure out simple shit. I mean, I just sit back and go, okay, what school did you go to? And then I realized it's not the school. It's not the school. It's the person. Many people feel that when they can say, well, I have my uh, master's and I have my doctorates and I have this, I'm like, okay. I am more impressed with a guy that says, where is it at, but can figure out simple shit than I am with someone who's like, well, you know, who speaks perfectly well, and but can't do shit, can't produce nothing. If it wasn't for government systems, private sector jobs, I mean, I'm about to be really up, once again, I'm going to insult some people, you know, just to let you know. I think that the teachers that I, that taught me were a better crop than the current ones. And I know, yeah, I'm, I'm about to get it. And this is why. And it, it actually has an evil side to it. From 1920s to probably 1980s, 70s, 80s, the smartest women, there was only a few fields that were available to them. Education, nursing, stuff like that. 
So I got the best and the brightest women of the day as teachers because that's all they get, the only jobs they can get. I know it was horribly unfair to them to be locked in, but I benefited and many of people my age also did because we got better teachers because we got the cream of the crop. We got awesome people because that's the only damn job they can do and take their brilliance and intellect into it. And I think this current group we have is not so um, dedicated because I'm looking at the end product. You hear, well, it's the home and the parents. And I, I will also say that part of the thing is, and this is me and, and people will disagree, uh, that they've taken power away from teachers to straighten out the little motherfuckers. I mean, when I was in school, you didn't talk back to teachers. You didn't yell. You didn't do this stuff because there were something called consequences. Now, eh, not so much. <laughs> not so much. Not so much. But I feel that one of, that's one of the reasons that I'm able to figure out a lot of stuff because I was in the educational system that had consequences. If you didn't do the lesson, you didn't do what you need to do, they flunked you. And that's what life does to you. If you don't do what you need to do, they will flunk you. Life will flunk your ass. Life would be like big fat fucking F for you, you flunky. That's what life will do to you. Life is not going to give you a curve. It's not going to give you a curve. It's not going to just say, ah, oh, you know, all right, you're going to get extra points for showing up. Life is not doing that to you. Life is spanking that ass. That's what life does. And uh, I really believe that if you can rid yourself divest yourself of certain beliefs you will be able to be very successful going forward because it is all about accumulating knowledge points and being able to execute the knowledge that you gain that's one of the things that i had to teach myself i mean i, I think i've always had great ideals but the execution sucked a great idea with poor execution is the same as no ideal and poor execution usually is no execution <laughs> That's what it usually is. So if you are in that situation where you are a thinker, a ponderer, and the activity level is like uh, kind of low, kind of low, can you kind of low can you go? You're gonna have problems because there are people out there who are action oriented, and they're gonna steal your thunder, eat your lunch, spank your ass, and and dodge the big penis because the big penis is gonna be coming for them, and they're gonna do this number. Shoot. And he'd be like, ah! <laughs> to the swiftest goes the un, un, uh, the un, uh, <laughs> I just saw, thought of something very obscene. I'm not going to share it. But to the swiftest goes the safe booty. Let's put it that way. But this is where we are. This is where we are. We are in this place. We're in a spot where you've got to make choices now while things are cool because when you're trying to do this stuff in a pan in a state of panic in a state of dire need in a state of i just lost my job and there's only you know 50 bucks in the bank and uh, i don't get unemployment until x you're not operating at a high level you're operating out of fear and panic and typically the results that come from fear and panic they're usually not the best. Sometimes they work out well, but frequently, nah, you know. And, uh, you know, it's an emotional response. But what I want to say to you is you need to start working on your business today. You need to um, really, really think of your future because you're going to either be a disruptor or you're going to be disrupted. That's how I feel. That's, that's how I got my life. That's what predicates my business decisions. That's what predicates how I, I drop information because I'll tell you, if I put out something and y'all go, boo, we don't like that, uh, no response, I will can that shit just like that. I will not think twice of it because I've already gotten it. It's like, people don't want this shit. It does not, I mean, that's one of the things I get with writers. It's, it, you can't, writers are some of the sensitive little bitches you've, oh my God. You, it's, I, I just in my groups I just don't kill sacred cows I just lean up by the tree and just chill because a few of them have come around because when I joined that group oh man I was in that I was a 
annihilated because I said, you know, this one book shit's not going to work. If you want to have a professional career as a writer, you're going to need several books and you're going to need to write fast and you're going to have to put out a lot of work. And I was just like called a hack and people were like going to Amazon. It's like, oh, you ain't really selling that much on Amazon. It's, no, bitch, because I sell 90% of my books from my blog. And it was just crazy. And uh, many people cannot divorce themselves from the concepts of their effort level versus what the world wants. I mean, you can put out a crazy amount of effort on the book. You can literally just cut open your wrist and bleed on the page. And if the world is not interested in that shit, and that's not to say don't write that book that, you know, where you want to bleed on the page. What I'm just saying is do not expect financial adulation because you wrote a book. But, you know, I, I've, I've just been I just shake my head at some of my friends because uh, I will share this story with you. One of my friends who's written 30 books was on my case with my first book because I was saying, hey, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And this was her advice to me. You need to work on your craft. You need to spend five years working on that book and getting this and getting that. And I thanked her. And I also say uh, my first editor who just said, look, you know, you can't write. You need to let me do this. I'll handle this. I'll shape this up for you. Both of them have filed bankruptcy. Got back to me. Both of them filed bankruptcy and lost all their shit. So what is the moral of that story, boys and girls? Don't listen to people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Because if I had listened to her, my book would be just coming out. And the storage auction thing would have been over. And it would have been real pretty. It would have been really nice. And oh yeah, and it's like it looks good. And I would be broke as fuck. <laughs> broke and pretty ain't pretty. I'm sorry. Broke and pretty ain't pretty. And uh, I, I look at that. And once again, I'm saying my intuition. And you know, many people are going to disagree with this. You are better off putting out a fucked up product, learning from that fucked up product, reintroducing the product, learning from that product, reintroducing the product, and then sitting on your ass trying to make pretty and perfect and hope it works out. That's what I did. Uh, the first book, I, I said it, I'll be open. I, it was it was a editing fucking nightmare, but financially, it supported me because Aside from the editing and the typos, the content was gold. I mean, a lot of people made money from that book. And they told me. And it's like, uh, I get a lot of thank yous from that book. Because that is the power of believing in yourself. And that's that's why I keep telling you. If you mess up, it's going to be okay. It's, it's, I'm telling you. It is, it is not as going to be bad as you think. I mean, I don't know. I'm different. I'm not afraid to fail. I, I will just go ahead and push that envelope until I hear ripping but really, do yourself a favor, pick something. Uh, you don't have to buy my products, buy someone else's products, subscribe to some other internet person and get yourself a business started today. Because let's say your job is safe, okay? Let's say it's safe. Your income may not be, which means uh, it may stagnate. You may get to a certain place and you can never increase your income. That's going to be a problem. The dollar's losing value. You, you make the same money, your buying power goes down. That's a problem. You own the business, you're in control of your income. You can keep working and working until you get it where you want it. You can crank it up, you can crank it down. You can't do that with a job. Not in today's job, job market. So, essentially, what I'm saying is, get that business started. All right, this is Glendon. Thank you for enjoying my rant and uh, insulting people and shooting sacred cows and talking smack. I will be back and I'll see you on the good side.